when people say the words work-life balance, I used to get real pissed off because I was like, <laughs> what balance balance does not exist balance is not possible i am a single mom trying to parent my kid who also has to feed that kid and i have to do the laundry and i have to make sure that the dishes get done and i need to make sure that the place isn't trashed all the time and somehow i still have to pay the bills while also making sure that my son gets enough of my attention to be so you can be a good mom and show up in his life balance does not exist there is only chaos and utter exhaustion so mama if you relate to this i want you to know that i see you i hear you i feel you I was you, but there is a better way. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can create work-life balance so that way you get time to pay the bills, keep the house clean, and spend time with your kids, and even make time for yourself. But before we get into that, we have to redefine what the word balance means. When people think of the words work-life balance, they think of a scale, and they want the scale to be even. But unfortunately, this is not life and this is how it works. Life is going to ebb and flow. So work and life are going to sometimes go up and go down. The balance still exists, but it's not this 50-50 equal all the time forever. You have to learn how to ride the waves in the ebbs and flows of work-life balance in order to create the actual balance in your life. But Carly, if it's not actually balanced, then it's not balanced and it's chaos. And trust me, mama, I hear you, but please bear with me. In order to achieve balance, we need to stop thinking of life as 24 hours and a day, a week, a month. And instead, we need to see our lives as seasons. Each season of our life is going to be different. And I'm not just talking about summer, spring, fall, winter. I'm talking about seasons of our life where things are utterly chaotic and seasons of our life where things seem to be a little bit more pulled together. Naturally in life, there are going to be seasons of distress, of sadness, of grief, and there's going to be seasons of excitement and happiness. Just like that, there's going to be seasons of super, super busy with work and seasons of super, super busy with kids. What we need to do is look at each season individually and learn how to find the balance with each individual season. What I mean by this is there's going to be seasons where you're going to have to work more to ensure that the roof stays over your kid's head, that you can live the life that you want to live, and the work part is going to take precedence over the life part. And that's okay. That doesn't make you a bad mom. Instead, this makes you, wait for it, human. There are seasons of life where work is gonna take precedence. The problem doesn't come from busy seasons. The problem comes from it being out of balance for really long periods of time. And it's just the same with the other way. There's going to be seasons where family's gonna come first, where maybe you are carting kids to football and to cheer practice, and you're going to science fairs, and you're going on vacations, and work is gonna take a back seat, and life is going to take precedence. This doesn't mean that you're not productive with work. It means that your priorities right now lie with your family. And just like I said earlier, this is not a problem. And I know that this would be the ideal. Most of us do not currently have the ability to make this reality 24 seven. And plus, if we let work sit on the back burner for too long, and then we make family the priority 100% of the time, all of a sudden the electricity gets turned off. And now your family's taking precedence and you're so panicked you can't focus on work and it causes the whole scale to fall over. When it comes to work-life balance, we have to stop thinking of the scale and instead think of life in seasons and ask ourselves what is important in this season. So with that being said, I'm gonna show you my personal schedule and show you how you can take this to inspire your schedule to find that work-life balance in whatever season of life that you're in. Let's get into it. So what you're looking at right now is my weekly schedule. It looks very busy and it looks very full and that's because, well, it is. I do a lot. I am a mom, of course, to my amazing son, but I also work part-time as a social media engagement coordinator. I run my own business as an abusive relationship recovery coach for moms, and I also freelance as a content strategist, and as you can tell, I'm also a YouTuber. So I do a lot, and I used to get really frustrated with myself that I couldn't do it all at once. And while I'm the first to tell you that you shouldn't try to do everything all at once, and I have scaled back 
a lot of things to get to this place. But I have been able to take all of these things and fit them into my life instead of fitting my life into work. You know what I mean? So bear with me, it's going to seem a little overwhelming, but I'm gonna walk you through it step by step. But before I dive in and show you my schedule, I want to address something that I know that you're thinking. Time blocking just doesn't work for me. It's too much, my life is too hectic, things are too insane, I don't know what to do, there's too many things on the schedule, everything changes all the time, I can't do a schedule like this, because then if I fail, I'm just gonna beat myself up about it, and my whole day is gonna be ruined. And I get that, and I felt the same way. What the problem with this mindset is that we see time blocking in a calendared schedule as restrictive. We think we are stuck doing this one thing all the time and there's no room for flexibility and if things come up then it screws up the whole schedule. Instead, I want you to flip that and begin to think of calendar blocking and following a schedule like this as freedom. The reason why is because as moms, especially us as single moms, we have so much to do all the time. And if we are looking at a blank calendar and we think of the number of things that we want to get done in a day, week, month, year, there's no time for it. There's no room for it. Cause it's like, okay, there's, there's no way that I can do this. There's no way that I can make sure that my kid gets to football and I meal prep and I'm able to make it to the gym and I'm able to work on my side bit, my side hustle there, and, and, and get everything that done for work and get the laundry done. And there's too much. But when you have it on a schedule, it makes it a lot easier to see just how possible it is to fit things in. And when something comes up, and cuts into the middle of your day, you're not wondering, oh my gosh, now I've got to shove everything, I'm gonna be up all night. Instead, you can switch things around. For example, my dad wanted to take my son on a walk the other morning and it was during our scheduled school hour for the day. So what I did is instead of freaking out wondering when we're gonna do school, is after, as you'll see here in a moment, we have school time and then we have our workout time. This is when we do a workout video together on YouTube. If you have not checked out Get Kids Moving, it is so great. Absolute favorite, favorite YouTube channel ever. And that is scheduled for the hour after school time. So instead I was like, okay, he's gonna be gone for an hour and he's gonna go on a walk. That's his energy release time. That is his workout time. So we're going to flip that. So when he was out with my dad, I went ahead and I did my workout during that time. And then when he got home, he did his school hour and then that's my first hour of work. But it didn't completely derail my schedule. Versus before, if my dad would have asked that, I would have been like, okay, I've gotta move everything around. What am I gonna do? How am I, how am I gonna fiddle this into my day? It's gonna screw everything up. But I was able to move things around. Here's another example. Last night, I had a scheduled block to work on YouTube. But during that block, I actually was given the opportunity to go to a concert to see one of my favorite bands. For that time, I was like, shoot, I'm not gonna be able to work tonight, but I wanted to make it work. So what I did is I moved that block up to earlier before the concert, and then I was able to go to the concert and enjoy it without worrying about work. I still got my time in, I still got the work done that I needed to get done, and I went to the concert. Instead of spending all day stressing and am I gonna be able to go to the concert? How am I gonna make this work? I'm gonna get so behind on everything, things are gonna fall apart. It's gonna be absolutely terrible. Instead, I had the freedom to move things around. This is also possible for when unexpected things come up. Like if a child gets sick or you get sick, things can get moved. And even if you can't move something around to still make everything fit, you know, okay, this happened during this block, so I need to figure out how to add an extra hour, um, maybe on Saturday to get this done and play catch up. That way, instead of thinking you're gonna be working all day Saturday, you know you only have an hour to make up for. So you can tell your kid, hey bud, I know I don't normally work on Saturdays, but I just have this one hour of work and then I'm all yours. Time blocking is not restrictive. Time blocking is freedom. The last thing that I wanna address here is the fact that like if you miss something or you don't do something or you forget about it or you just don't want to do something, how to handle it. Number one, if you miss a block or things happen, again, you can just shift things. You can move things around. You can compromise. Uh, just adjust with the way life comes at you. The scheduling and time blocking is not this set in stone done calendar. Instead, this is a living schedule, which means it's going to change as your life changes. I put things in Google Calendar for a reason, because it's easily shiftable, things are movable and repeatable, and I don't gotta stress about it. Plus, there are going to be times, as you'll see here in a second, that I have meetings during scheduled blocks outside of certain office hours. 
This doesn't mean that my whole day is ruined. Instead, I just adjust. My son also loves this schedule. When he knows that every morning we're gonna have screen-free breakfast and we're going to spend time together while he's doing school and I'm doing work and then we're gonna clean together, we're gonna work out and exercise together. Like he knows that stuff is coming and so when it is time for me to take a step back and do my office hours and get some work done, get some things moving, he is more likely to let me get my work done because he knows that if he does, he's going to get more of my time and attention later on during the scheduled times of the day. With all of that being said, said, I want to walk you through my weekly calendar so you can see how this works in real time for a real mama who has an insane life. As you can see here, this is my weekly schedule. I will wake up at 5 a.m. and have my Bible time, my devotion time. My faith is really important to me, so I want to start my day out with this, followed by vision casting. I'm going to do a whole video on this very soon, but in general, what this means is I'm just journaling about the life that I'm creating just to get really solidified on my why and what I'm doing. And right here from 6 to 7 a.m. every day, you will see that this is breakfast time. We do a screen-free breakfast, so I used to have a really bad habit of bringing my phone to, to the table or we would just eat meals in front of the TV all of the time and for me personally I wanted more connection than that and so I decided that we were gonna do a no screen breakfast so this is where my son gets my one-on-one -on -one attention after breakfast we do school where he spends an hour on the Adventure Academy it's like ABC Mouse if you've heard of that but it's like the next age up that he does for an hour every morning and he loves it while he is doing that, this is where I do my first hour of work. I sit on my bed and I get all snuggled up and he sits at my desk and he does his schoolwork for an hour and I do my work for an hour. Followed by that, it says gym time. Initially it was gonna be the gym, but we are genuinely enjoying working at home, so that's what we are sticking with. After gym, we I have an hour of office hours. This is where my son can go play in his room or he can sit in my room and like with his headphones on and play on his switch while I work for an hour. These are my like business hours where I'm catching up on client work or I'm editing a podcast, uh, things like that. This is our dedicated time to clean. So I have just started implementing this recently and I really like the results we've gotten so far. We clean together. I turn on some really fun music and we make it a lot of fun. After we clean, it is time for lunch slash work. So this is the meal where I did have to compromise a bit because I do need to get work done. This is where I allow him to go eat in front of the TV or go eat in the living room, like have a picnic, something like that, while I get work done. After that, we go to the park. So that is the first half of the day. And as you can tell, there's a lot of work in there, but there's also a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with my son. This is where my big chunk of time come in. I have hours two to four listed where I will be online and available for communication. Um, and process driven but I have it available from two to five in case I have some extra work that needs to get done. This allows me to make sure that like I have the time to get everything done, but I'm not required to be ready and available for everyone to reach out to me. Then we have dinner. As you can see, there's like a little uh, like blo open block right here. This is essentially just preparing for dinner, getting everything ready to go. After dinner, we're just gonna chill and get ready for bed. This is where we'll watch like an episode of My Hero Academia before bed, or maybe we'll play on the video game together. Just like a last thing that we do to hang out. I get Axel to bed between here. The goal is to have him in bed, um, like have bedtime wrapped up by eight. Sometimes it's still 8.30 though, so I left that here. I work from 8.30 to 2.30 in the evening, and then I do my DDPY, which is yoga, and then it all starts again the next day. And as you can see, I have office hours here. These are for my business hours, and then I also have scheduled time for YouTube. So I have scheduled time for YouTube. I have scheduled time to clean. I have scheduled time to do my part-time work. I have time scheduled for my freelance stuff. It all fits, and the only reason it fits is because I took the time to make it fit. Work-life balance as a mom does not look the same for everyone. A single mom versus a mom who has a partner to help. We all look different and maybe your schedule won't look the same as mine. Maybe you don't need to have every minute scheduled out for your day. If you do not work from home, this is still something that you can implement. Take this and do with it what you will. Edit it and change it to fit your life. And then what I would love for you to do is comment below and let me know what stood out to you the most if you had any like mind blown moments 
let's have a conversation. Start it below. And if you have any questions, I am more than happy to answer them. Make sure that if you want to continue on this journey of being your best single mom self, hit that subscribe button because we have so much good content coming. Thanks for hanging out, boo. We'll talk soon.